Good morning, everyone. Uh, good morning here, and have a good day there, whatever time it is. Um, I'll try to get away from the good morning thing, knowing that we have people listening all around the world. Um, you know, we our salvation is not based upon our feelings, our emotions, or charges by other people against us. Ad hominem attacks. <laughs> And uh, people may not understand us. But, you know, when we are uh, involved in dialogue with people, it's very easy to look at just one side of the picture, is it not? See things only from our perspective. I'm talking to myself, too, by the way. Um but anyway, God knows our hearts, and God is a, a God of uh, that reveals things to us. And uh, anyway, this morning we're going to be reading from the Daily Light, and uh, today is the 8th of April, 2019. And you know, if I listen to everyone that condemned me, and told me they didn't want to be my friend, and told me I couldn't get anything straight, told me I was deceptive and a deceiver and all these other things, I I would have stopped a long time ago. Good morning. God bless you, Ashley. But you know what? My trust is not in man. My trust is not in the arm of flesh. Whether a person wants to be my friend or doesn't want to be my friend, when a person sees all of my weaknesses and all of my imperfections and all of my sin, I just have to say to them, guilty is charged. I'm guilty of all of the things. But you know what? God took my sins on the cross through his son, Jesus Christ. That's my only hope. I am the first to admit that in the flesh dwell in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. Well, it says in First Corinthians one five. In everything you are enriched by Him. Romans five six. When you were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. He that spared not His own sin, Son, but delivered Him up for us all. How shall He not with Him also freely give us all things? In him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And Mark is snoring really loud today. And I'm right next to him here where he's sleeping this morning. So bear with me. Maybe I can shake him and get him to stop snoring. Um, In him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and you are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. Abide in me and I in you, as the branch can now bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. (laughs) And he that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. To will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. And every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. If ye abide in me and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. So I did from 1 Corinthians 1, 5, Romans 5, 6, Romans 8, 32, Colossians 2, 9, and 10, John 15, 4, and 5, Romans 7, 18, Ephesians 4, 7, John 15, 7, and Colossians 3, 6. Good morning, Emmanuel Carissa Bahati from Kenya, Africa. Welcome aboard. Well, sometimes things don't work out the way we like, you know. And uh, when we try to be open and honest with people, uh, they, rather than open up and being honest, 
you know, if they're in disagreement, I was recently in conversation with a person, and I said, let's have a phone call and openly discuss our differences. And he agreed to do it, and then he reneged on what he said he would do. He said he didn't want to do it. And he wouldn't do it in written correspondence either. Well, a lot of allegations have been made, you know, against me. I can't get anything straight. I'm lazy. I'm ignorant. I make ignorant comments. I make unsophisticated comments. And yet, I'm the one that makes ad hominem attacks, you know. But the point is that I'm trying to make here, we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Our only hope is in Christ and and in his completed work on the cross. I'm trying to get Mark to quit snoring here. (laughs) I probably should have went back to my other area instead of trying to do it here um, where I'm at. Well, God is faithful. He's been faithful over the years, and I will just say this um, to all of those that are involved in government of any kind. My statement regarding separation statements, by the way, that statement infuriated a lot of people. I did put disclaimers in it, you know. A lot of people have a different perspective of what separation is. Come out and roll to be separate, saith the Lord. Touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. Okay. And so anyway, that separation, when it says come out from the world and be separate, saith the Lord. Touch not the unclean thing. Um, Leon Kennedy, welcome aboard. You know, if people are involved in a corrupt system by their own admission, if they're involved, whether it's a corrupt corporation, whether it's a corrupt government, whether it be federal, state, county, city, uh, if they're involved in corrupt churches, okay, um, then oftentimes they become actually a part of the corruption because, first of all, if you're involved in a position, a career, where you're working a high position in government, things are going to be asked of you that go against the Word of God. And people say, well, that's not always the case. It may not be always the case, but I can tell you you're talking to a former government employee And I know how much corruption was at the state level, so I can imagine how much corruption is at the federal level. Okay? And people that are into denial about it. They're into denial about the fact that they're involved in a corrupt system. And so that's why we have those passages to talk about. You can't serve God and mammon. You just can't do it. You're going to love the one and hate the other. You're going to hate the one and love the other. You know, you cannot participate in pagan activities, okay, and then on the one side speak against those pagan activities, whether it be Easter celebrations, Christmas celebrations, um, And people say, well, Larry's a legalist. No, I'm just saying that what does separation mean from the world and the things of the world and the idolatry in the world? You know? And, you know, (laughs) it's amazing how people can only see their particular view. You know, I know a very high-profile person that has placed it on a on his profile that he's a registered Republican. You know, I am not an active 
part of the Republican or Democratic Party. I'm just not. And people say, well, you've got to choose the lesser of two evils. No, you don't. You do not have to participate in those evil systems. And so I am a... Uh, I abstain from participating in political evil corruption. I abstain from it. Good morning, Helen Combe. That's another part of separation, is abstaining from evil corruption. There are those that want to say that our founding fathers were Christian. I agree with Leon Kennedy. There's nothing Christian about the United States of America from its inception. Thomas Jefferson was a slave owner and beat one of his slaves unmercifully. Okay? And people want to try to exalt him as being such a grand and glorious founding father. You know? And he was the principal author of the Declaration of Independence. And the Declaration of Independence is full of lies. It's basically a Masonic universal document that, that promotes universalism, the universality of man. All men are created equal and endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights. Was that not somewhat duplicitous? That he would write that and then own slaves, saying all men are created equal? <laughs> do as I say, not as I do. Okay. You know, same thing with George Washington, you know. And so, you know, I, I when p people start talking about we were founded on Christian principles and all this, and whenever they come up with this Judeo-Christian garbage, there's nothing Christian about Judaism, and there's nothing Judaism about Christianity. <laughs> and that's the problem right now with this whole genre of, the state of Israel and all of that mess. It's all a big lie from the pit of hell. The scripture is clear that God has his elect that were chosen in him from the foundation of the world and that includes both Jew and Gentile, bond and free, male and female, white and black, rich and poor, from every kindred, every tongue, every people and every nation. I'm getting sick and tired of people trying to elevate the United States of America and trying to say they're a Christian nation. It's a joke. It's an absolute joke. Anyway, I didn't mean to get off on a rant this morning. But this is just some of the thoughts that I am having, you know. People want to talk against organized religion, and I talk against it. But yet again, they, by their own admission... Uh, go and participate in it. <laughs> they want to come against popery and top down, but yet they they have that more or less elitist attitude themselves that they have the final say on everything. Look, I don't have the final say on everything. Jesus Christ has the final say on everything. You know, and so when people come across as like they the most important thing for them is to win an argument. Okay? And and their very demeanor shows that, does not? You know, I am not interested in winning arguments. I'm interested in proclaiming the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. I'm interested in looking at Christ and what he did on the cruel and rugged cross of Calvary for his people. I'm not interested in knowing all about politics or, or being a scholar or promoting scholars, name-dropping scholars. <laughs> you know, some people have to go to all these commentaries all the time. You know, they have to make sure they mention, you know, whoever, 
John Calvin, Martin Luther, Matthew Henry, Arthur Pink. And I like Arthur Pink, by the way. And I like some of what Calvin wrote, and I like some of what Luther wrote, and I like some of what Matthew Henry wrote. But none of those people have the final authority. God's Word is the final authority. And I'll never be into creeds and confessions and synods and sessions. I'm into the Word of God. His Word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my pathway. And so, this morning, I hope this gives us some things to think about. And I agree with Brother Ashley Kinney. You know, don't put your confidence in princes. That's what the Bible says. Don't don't do that <laughs> because we are going to fail each other miserably. We put our confidence in Jesus Christ. Amen. Our confidence rests wholly in His perfection, His complete work. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. There's no holiness in us. The only holiness we have is the imputed righteousness of Jesus Christ. I'm the chief sinner. I don't like it, but I am. But in Christ, I've been made alive. And God the Father looks through Jesus Christ and his righteousness, and therefore I'm accepted in the blood. I don't deserve to be. I deserve hell and damnation. But Jesus Christ had other ideas for this old sinner for which I'm grateful. Ever grateful, eternally grateful. So this morning, let us think on these things. Welcome aboard, Laura Lou Solomons. Um, and all the rest of you have joined, joined us um, for this broadcast this morning. I hope that it's been a blessing to you to realize that we have an Abba Father we can go to. You know, when somebody tells you they don't want to be your friend anymore, um, and they think you have something against them, you know, the only thing that I um, register against um something someone says is if I believe that it's contrary to the Word of God, whether it be their aspect of uh, what constitutes separation, what constitutes um, the Bible's teaching on coming out from the world and being separate, or whether it's uh, the teaching of not participating in pagan activities, whether it's the uh, teaching of... Um, not being a part of, uh, you know, the world system. You know, why do you think that the Apostle Paul was a tent maker? He worked with his hands. He was very well educated. He could have done a lot of things, but he chose to be a tent maker. Why did Jesus Christ choose three fishermen, Peter, James, and John? <clears throat> went fishing. <laughs> I used to sing that song. Peter, James, and John went fishing. Peter, James, and John went fishing out on the deep blue sea. Well, cast your nets on the other side. Cast your nets on the other side. You know, a lot of highfalutin scholars out there that have doctor's degrees, juris doctor's degrees, uh, PhDs piled higher and deeper, uh, Greek, Greek scholars, Hebrew scholars, doctors of divinity, master's degrees. You know what? I, it's all, what Paul say about it? He said it's all um it's all done. God has chosen the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. 
And so the gospel is a simple gospel. The perfect atonement of Jesus Christ for those for whom he died for. And that, by the grace of God, will be my theme for the rest of my life. He came to save his people from their sins. So may the good Lord give you a blessed week this week. And don't put your confidence in the armed flesh is my exhortation and admonition. Put, and the only way we can trust in Christ is if he has given us the faith of Christ to believe in him. It's not something we drum up of ourselves. But if he's given you life, you will embrace him and his teachings. May the good Lord be with you this day is my prayer. God bless.